Hello and welcome to Wrestling Tropolar, the channel where we analyze professional wrestling. If this is your first time here, help the channel by clicking the subscribe button. Today we are going back to 2018 to talk about The Generation X vs The Brothers of Destruction at the Crown Jewel pay-per-view. We pick up the story of this match on the September 3rd edition of Monday Night Raw. Triple H is scheduled to wrestle The Undertaker at a Super Showdown pay-per-view a month later on October 10th. But unknown to the fans, the plan is actually for that match to be a stepping stone for the Degeneration X match against the Brothers of Destruction two months later on the Crown Jewel pay-per-view. In the middle of the Raw broadcast, we find 53-year-old Shawn Michaels in the middle of the ring cutting a promo. And Shawn Michaels is missing his trademark ponytail and is portraying being the best friend of Triple H. Shawn Michaels is showing them guns clad in an official WWE star shirt. In a clear departure from the usual hunting gear, we have become accustomed to seeing Michaels in. Since his retirement back at WrestleMania 26, Shawn Michaels has been appearing on Raw for many, many years. Often dressing in some kind of hunting gear, Michaels has two separate roles whenever he shows up on Raw. Shawn Michaels either appears on Raw to shield merchandise and whatever failed ventures he happens to be pursuing at the time, or Shawn Michaels appears in a supporting role acting as a concerned friend to either Triple H or whoever is wrestling The Undertaker at the time. I called out The Undertaker. The big dog! Come WrestleMania, my friend, he is gonna eat you alive. Shawn Michaels proceeds with his usual WWE mandated shilling. Got the new HB Shizzle shirt. Buy it, baby, the WWE Network! and then talks about the Super Showdown match between Triple H and The Undertaker. Michaels defends his best friend Triple H and comments on the parade of then WWE affiliated former wrestlers that predicted Undertaker's win earlier in the show. Final match! Who's going to win? The Undertaker. My pick's gonna be The Undertaker. I gotta pick The Undertaker. My money, smart money, is on Taker. Two of the greatest of all time. I'm going with The Undertaker. Triple H is going to be the man. And as far as what's left in the tank, Undertaker, sorry my man, I think he's got a heck of a lot more left than you do. Then the gong hits, the lights go out, away we go, and the dead man makes his entrance surrounded with his great and awesome mystique that will never get old. Unlike the man behind the gimmick, Mark Calloway was now 53 years old and at this point is struggling with the final days of his in-ring career. In 2014, at WrestleMania 30, Undertaker lost more than the streak. He lost the match against Brock Lesnar and also lost his in-ring confidence. The match with Brock Lesnar left The Undertaker with a concussion and no recollection of the match. And finally, H caught up with the dead man and The Undertaker was never quite the same. Fast forward to 2017 and The Undertaker was planning to retire. And the wheels were in motion for The Undertaker to many events WrestleMania for the last time against Vince McMahon's new toy, Roman Reigns. Now at 52 years old, Undertaker was suffering from a range of injuries, the most severe being on his right hip. Undertaker, with a lack of confidence and the fact that Mother Nature waits for no man, caused the Undertaker Reigns match to go about as one would expect and The Undertaker was denied a satisfactory end to his illustrious career. And although the duster, the hat and the gloves were placed in the middle of the ring, the dead man wasn't done yet. And after having hip replacement surgery, Undertaker returned to the ring and by the falling WrestleMania, Undertaker had a short 3-minute match with John Cena, where The Undertaker impressed everyone with his quickness and agility. The Undertaker, now physically able to compete, was finally able to search for a last match feeding of his long and illustrious career. After The Undertaker takes his sweet time getting in the ring, Michaels and The Undertaker proceed to eyeball each other in the ring. And then The Undertaker tells Michaels I took the best that you had, and I took the best that Triple H had, and I put you both down. I think this became personal. 
because I took the one thing from you that was most important, your career. Michael's response by selling his true to retirement snake oil on both the people and the undertaker. Words that ring hollow after what transpired two months after, but more on that later. I am a man of my word. I have stayed away and stayed true to my retirement out of respect for them. I've stayed retired out of respect for you. The people chant for Michael's form. As the Undertaker doubts Michael's bullshit. And I shall respect. Is that what you're saying? You heard that. One more match. One more match. Half that locker room beating down my door. Every WrestleMania turning down literally millions of dollars. I've stayed retired out of respect for the Undertaker. Is it respect or is it fear? Two years earlier, this lovely picture shown on screen appeared on the internet. AJ Styles, ahead of the Royal Rumble, threw onto the wrestling ether the idea of Michaels vs. Styles. Internet marks rejoiced at the mere suggestion of that match, but sadly, what could have been the greatest match ever between two of the wrestlers that I consider to be the best of their respective generations never came to fruition. And on the Table for Three WWE Network show, Sean Michaels clarified some of the reasons why that match didn't happen. From a business standpoint, what do you do? I mean, who, who wins? Old sentimentality, you do that, hurts you bad. You're gonna come back and do something, why would I do that? If it were even creatively character arc for me, you know I mean? There's just too many things that are out of my wheelhouse. What check, if I was to start Shanny right now, you still got it. No, would yeah. that draw you in? <laughs> not so, if you leave on top before they want you to, that's what entertainment's all about, leave them wanting more. All of this sudden retirement talk in this segment comes out from left field. After refusing to wrestle AJ Styles a short while back, no one really believes that for Michaels a match might be on the horizon. So why are these two 53-year-old wrestlers treating this as a serious match promo? Back to the Raw promo, The Undertaker escalates things quickly. Make no mistake about it. If you had ever chosen to come out of retirement, I would put you down all over again. I'm the game, Triple H, and I would like to personally ask you to press that like button. Thanks. On the following Raw broadcast, September 10th, Triple H arrives courtesy of the Kayfabe limousine services. And moments later, the King of Kings is in the ring cutting a promo. We seem to have developed a little pattern here. Every single week you come out here and you run your mouth and every single week you subject all of us to watch you stand in the middle of the ring and you say this. Tonight, uh, I am the game. Uh, I'm going to be talking uh, for the next 20 minutes uh, and saying absolutely nothing. Well, The Rock says, uh, uh, you absolutely suck! Wow. At this point, Triple H has been the authority figure on Raw for many, many years, both on screen and off screen, where his title is the Chief Operating Officer, the COO. Triple H has been a boring presence on Raw, the driving force in the creation of the Performance Center and the creation of WWE's third brand, NXT. Triple H is also credited with the surge of independent wrestlers joining the WWE in recent years, and although Triple Triple H's best years in the ring are behind him, Triple H, out of the four wrestlers in this rivalry, is the one that has aged better and seems to be in top shape, being the only one out of these four wrestlers that has embraced his older age by changing with the times. Triple H is not trying to hide his receding airline like The Undertaker and neither his baldness like Shawn Michaels. He's not clean shaven attempting to look younger, Triple H didn't go back to an earlier form of his gimmick like Kane did, Triple H moved away from his game and cerebral assassin persona and embraced becoming the old warrior that he is, and his look carries that notion across with his long beard. Triple H changed his character and became the King of Kings. 
Back to Triple H's ring promo, Triple H proceeds to show the results of a fan poll on the outcome of the Super Showdown match, showing Undertaker winning in a landslide. What a f***ing surprise! Triple H then reacts to The Undertaker appearing a week prior during Shawn Michaels' promo. Poof, there he was, standing there in front of Shawn Michaels, angry. The Undertaker was bothered by Shawn Michaels' opinion? And if you go back to that series of matches years ago, he was never quite the same after that, was he? And finally, Triple H ends his promo with all that he had to say instead of rambling for almost 10 minutes and saying nothing. I will put you down. On the following Raw broadcast, it's now time for The Undertaker to cut another unnecessary promo in the ring to keep the story alive. Side note, this is a clear example of how these four wrestlers are treated differently compared to the rest of the locker room. Look no further than these promos happening all the way to the Super Showdown pay-per-view. If this was a rivalry with anyone else... Week 1, The Undertaker would defeat Triple H with a fluke win. Week 2, Triple H would wrestle something like a gauntlet match to get a chance to redeem himself at the following pay-per-view against The Undertaker. Week 3, Triple H would be wrestling Kane with The Undertaker on commentary and Undertaker would cause the match to end by disqualification. And on the final Raw before the pay-per-view, Triple H, the babyface at this point, would probably be left laying somewhere on the cold arena floor with Michael Cole using the tired words, Oh my, could it be? Will Triple H be able to make it to Australia? Back to The Undertaker in the ring cutting his promo, Undertaker talks about delusion being the final recourse for the dance. They say delusion is the final recourse for the damned. No man can spin a web of lies like a man that has a broken soul. Undertaker points out that Triple H is no longer the cerebral assassin because he's the WWE CEO. His battlefield is the boardroom and he can't see his own demise. When I face Triple H for the last time, game over! He's gonna do everything that he can to outrace the Reaper, even enlist his best friend Shawn Michaels. Undertaker announces to the world that The Undertaker also has backup. Standing in my corner will breathe my brother Kane. On the next Raw broadcast, again Triple H arrives to the venue courtesy of the Kayfabe limousine services. Stephanie McMahon is with Triple H and Stephanie proceeds to bury Baron Corbin's gimmick and then Triple H goes off to do something untelevised. And an hour later, Triple H is now shown leaving with Stephanie back into the limousine and Triple H gets asked about The Undertaker's comments last week. When it comes to The Undertaker, the end is near. On the last Raw broadcast before Super Showdown, the show's main event was given to Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels goes on to say that this event will be amazing, but both the audience and the dudes in the front row are not impressed. Michaels rambles for a while and leaves a note of warning to Kane, who was added to this story a week prior by The Undertaker. You've got your brother Kane in your corner. Triple H has got his brother in his corner. Kane, you or anybody else tries to crowd that ring, I will brush you back courtesy of some sweet kid music. Then Kane's music hits, but Kane is nowhere to be seen. And wrestling trope alert, Kane is behind Shawn Michaels, as all supernaturally themed superstars always seem to be. At this point, Kane, real name Glenn Jacobs, is 51 years old and is mostly retired from in-ring competition, having embraced a career in politics, becoming the mayor of Knox County two months prior on August 2nd, 2018. Kane is looking his usual self because when you wear a mask, you only get old when the bell rings. Kane! 
And as The Undertaker prepares to tombstone piledrive Shawn Michaels, the COO Triple H comes out to help his friend Shawn Michaels, leading to stereo choke slams and the tombstone piledriver on Triple H. And the two members of the Generation X are left laying in the ring as the Brothers of Destruction stand by the entrance with their fists raised. At the Super Showdown event in Melbourne, Australia, Triple H is scheduled to wrestle The Undertaker in a match dubbed The Last Time Ever, a premise that back then seemed like a bad idea to build a story upon, because of the never-ending cycle of broken promises that WWE has broken. For me as a fan, it's hard to believe that any match, no matter how old or how hyped, could be the last and we can easily find other instances with these two very same wrestlers where the definitive match taglines were not upheld in the slightest, like back in 2012, where Triple H and The Undertaker battled each other at WrestleMania, with Shawn Michaels serving as the referee. That match was dubbed End of an Era, and here we are 6 years later, and these three men in their 50s are still dominating the main event scene. In the main event of Super Showdown, Triple H and The Undertaker would wrestle each other in a long drawn out match typical of Triple H's matches. The match had suddenly become no disqualification while the wrestlers were already in the ring because of reasons, and Triple H would have the support of Shawn Michaels all through the match, as would Undertaker have the backing of Kane. Two referees would be laid out during this match, both The Undertaker and Triple H would get a chance to deliver their respective greatest seats to the delight of the Australian audience and overall it was a decent match between these two legends of professional wrestling. By the end of the match Triple H would hit Undertaker with his trademark sledgehammer delivered to him by Triple H's friend Shawn Michaels. Michaels then delivers a switch in music on The Undertaker who goes straight into Triple H's pedigree. The referee Mikey Oda counts to three and Triple H wins the match and celebrates with the hard break it Shawn Michaels who is wearing his ridiculous half to rag as The Undertaker and Kane gaze in disappointment. After the match, Undertaker gives Triple H his sledgehammer back, and Triple H symbolically throws it away, and as the people are expecting the four men to celebrate their in-ring battle and their long and illustrious career like what happened back at WrestleMania 28, Triple H gets a tombstone piledriver and Shawn Michaels goes through the announced desk and the story continues. After the Super Showdown pay-per-view, the appearances and boring segments are fortunately cut to a minimum. These four individuals are still on TV every week, leading to the Crown Jewel pay-per-view, but their appearances now become short and sweet. On the Raw broadcast after the Super Showdown pay-per-view, October 8th, we find Triple H and Shawn Michaels in the ring to open the show, reuniting their tag team pairing The Generation X and Triple H asking Shawn Michaels Are you ready? Shawn Michaels then answers, if you are not down with that We got two words for ya! Off come their shirts and DX shirts are revealed, Shawn Michaels comes out of retirement and DX faces the Brothers of Destruction on November 2nd. A week later on the October 15th, the Brothers of Destruction deliver their answer emanating from the bowels of an undisclosed building. The reunification of D-Generation X is built on a bed of lies. Triple H may have won a battle in Australia. All of Shawn Michaels' fears will come true. Triple H and Shawn Michaels, you had three words for us, but we have three words for you. Go f*** yourself. <laughs> Rest in peace. And on the following Raw broadcast, October 22nd, we find Triple H and Shawn Michaels in the ring to rehash their glory days as the Generation X, dressing in far less merchandise than they did 10 years prior when these two graced the WWE's airwaves in the early iteration of the Generation X. Triple H and Shawn Michaels then cut a promo making fun of the Brothers of Destruction promo in the boiler room the prior week, specifically targeting Kane and his day job as the mayor of Knox County. 
It's gonna take a lot more to instill fear. Grabbing a GoPro, throwing on your mask, walking down the stairs of Knoxville City Hall, stepping into the boiler room, and making some kind of threat. Ain't neither one of us running for mayor. Then these two aging dinosaurs speak words of supposed wisdom, but fail miserably by lacking self-awareness. Another word that's been thrown around lately, it's nostalgia. Nostalgia is just a real polite way of saying old. Triple H continues the Shawn Michaels line of reasoning and adds. We packed 70,000 people into the G to see this. And then Triple H speaks the words that he would be forced to swallow a week later. Maybe old is just a really polite way of saying we're better. And as the X prepares to punctuate their promo in their usual fashion. We ain't coming for nostalgia. We are coming to kick your ass. And if you're not down with that, we got two Arrogance precedes a fall. Your first match against us can't outrun the Reaper. Will be your last match against anybody. You can't turn back the clock. And you will never rest in peace. On the last Raw broadcast before the Crown Jewel pay-per-view, we find the Brothers of Destruction in the main event slot talking about the end of DX at the hands of the Brothers of Destruction and the end of these four men's careers. At WWE Crown Jewel, it will be slow, agonizing pain. And then the Brothers of Destruction call out the Generation X. Triple H and Shawn Michaels, you are being summoned to this ring right now. So we can take your souls so that you can never rest in peace. Really? Rest in peace? Who thought cutting The Undertaker off at P was a good idea? Life sucks and then you die. <laughs> Triple H makes his entrance without Shawn Michaels, Kane leaves the ring to confront Triple H, Undertaker stays behind, and supposedly Michaels is to follow Triple H. But wrestling trope alert, Shawn Michaels is behind The Undertaker and Michaels delivers a switch in music on The Undertaker, with his ridiculous looking half drag on his head, but moments later The Undertaker rises from the dead and both teams eyeball each other as Raw goes off the air. Three hours deep into the Crown Jewel pay-per-view, it's now time for the Degeneration X vs Brothers of Destruction match. Degeneration X would be the first two men to make their entrance clad in leather, and this would be the first time that HB Shizzle would finally lose his stupid half do rag and embrace his boldness. Yay for self-awareness! Kane would make his entrance next, walking briskly to the ring, Undertaker would be the last wrestler joining the ring, walking fine with his two new hips to join the three other men. John Cone, the father of Nicholas, one half of former tag team champions Nicholas and Strowman, officiates this match and so far so good. But the match that would happen next would be a classic case of… and then the bell rang. Triple H punches Kane, Kane no sells, Kane sends Triple H flying to the corner, Kane takes out Triple H with a slap, to the opposite corner goes Triple H, Kane has Triple H's arm, Shawn Michaels is tagged in, back to in ring action after 8 and a half years, Michaels with the knife head shops on Kane, Michaels is looking good with the swinging neck breaker, Kane comes back to life and grabs Michaels neck, Michaels reverses, sunset flip attempt, Kane catches Michaels, Michaels almost gives a switch in music to Kane and Kane tags in his cafe brother Undertaker. Undertaker gets in the ring, the mood swings eerie, Undertaker slides his finger across his throat, Michaels gives Undertaker the DX crotch chop, Undertaker swings and misses, Michaels with a chop on the Undertaker but can't capitalize, Undertaker drops Michaels with a big boot and down is Michaels, Undertaker works on Michaels arm, shoulder tackle and as the Undertaker attempts 
attempts to walk the ropes, Triple H interferes and Kane directs Triple H away. Michaels gets sent flying into the corner courtesy of Undertaker and Michaels gets stuck in the tree of wool. Triple H is then sent flying towards the corner courtesy of Kane. <laughs> And this is where the shit is a fan. Triple H, as he was being sent out of the ring flying, tore his pectoral muscle completely out of the bone, an injury that required post-match surgery to fix. Undertaker throws Michaels off the ring and Triple H attempts to put himself together feeling the immense pain of his injury and having limited use of his right arm. The X gets back in the ring to reverse the Kane and the Undertaker choke slam attempt. Undertaker and Kane get sent outside. Undertaker works on Michaels. Undertaker goes old school and drops Michaels. Undertaker works on Michaels in the corner stopped only by the referee. Michaels dodges Undertaker's knee. Triple H gets tagged in to shop the Undertaker. Triple H gets some momentum off the ropes and the Undertaker stops Triple H with only his eyes. Short clothesline on Triple H, tag to Kane, Triple H gets worked on in the corner by Kane, scoop slam on Triple H, Triple H dodges Kane's elbow, Kane and Triple H straight blows, center of the ring, kick to Kane's gut and Triple H plants Kane with a DDT and reaches for a tag in tremendous pain. Vintage Shawn Michaels flies towards Kane but shows his age with significantly less hang time than 8 years prior. Michael still manages to nip up, 1 and 2 inverted atomic drops, Michael sucker punches the Undertaker and the people chant as Michael smiles. Triple H gets in the ring to deliver a lackluster suplex on Kane, Michaels climbs the corner to successfully deliver his patented top rope elbow, Michaels then tunes up the band and Kane blocks it and delivers a choke slam on Michaels. Undertaker gets tagged in, Michaels gets punched out by the Undertaker in the corner, Irish whip to the opposite corner, snake eyes on Michaels, Michaels is down, Blake drop on Michaels and Triple H distracts the Undertaker and Michaels drops the the Undertaker with the switch in music but can't pin The Undertaker. Moments later, Undertaker throws Michaels outside and proceeds to dismantle the announced desk. On top of the desk, Undertaker has Michaels in a precarious situation and Triple H saves Michaels from certain doom. Kane shows up to be sent flying towards the steel steps, Triple H with one working arm sends Undertaker towards the barricade, Triple H gets caught attempting to do a flying nothing, Kane catches Triple H and throws Triple H through the announced dance. Undertaker lays down Michaels on the hardest part of the ring and drops the leg on Michaels. Back in the ring, pinfall attempt but still Michaels kicks out a 2. Tag to Kane works Michaels in the corner, another pinfall attempt, Undertaker gets tagged in, suplex on Michaels and another near fall. Tag to Kane, Kane punts Michaels in the chest, again Michaels kicks out, Michaels gets worked on in the corner, vintage sidewalk slam by Kane and another near fall. Kane now climbs the corner but comes tumbling down courtesy of Michaels. Undertaker drags Michaels off the ring, Michaels throws Undertaker into the steel post, back in the ring, Kane plants Michaels in the corner and as both men fight in the corner, disaster strikes as Kane loses his mask. And if one disaster was not enough, Shawn Michaels takes flight with a moonsault, missing both Kane and the Undertaker. Shawn Michaels drags himself back in the ring searching to tag the one arm back and did Triple H. Kane is close by and Triple H goes to town on Kane with his vintage offense. Undertaker gets a spine buster but recovers soon after, back body drop of the pedigree attempt, choke slam, Triple H reverses another pedigree, this time successful, Kane interferes but Triple H manages to send Kane flying outside, Undertaker puts Triple H on a Hell's Gate submission, Michael stumbles towards Kane, reversal, switching music on Kane who falls backwards on the Undertaker breaking the Hell's Gate, everyone is down and contemplating retirement, Kane and the Undertaker sit up, Tombstone attempts, Shawn Michaels pokes Kane in the eye, switching music on the Undertaker, switching music on Kane, pedigree on Kane, pinfall and Degeneration X wins this match. And this match, my friends, is why... You got to know when to hold them. Couple super kicks, drop an elbow. Then I'll be great. No when to fold them. My arm was hooked in there deep, and I just No when to walk away. It looked like Kane's whole head fell off because his mask came off. No when to run. It couldn't have gone any worse. You never count your money. It was a total train wreck. It was a disaster. Sitting 
at the table. There'll be time enough for counting when the dealing's done. Thank you for watching this trip down memory lane. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comments below. Feel free to press that like button and also subscribe for more future content just like this. Or better, this has been fun. Thank you for watching.